Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade 5 we are working on module 1 lesson 14 and we are dividing decimals with a remainder using place value understanding and we are relating that to the written method which we would call the standard algorithm of division. So in addition to math problems I've got my continuing health problems of my cold so I apologize in advance for my voice, my sniffles, my coughs, any sneezes that might come along on the, along the way that get mixed in with our math. Um, luckily, uh, YouTube will prevent you from catching my cold. Awesome. Let's take a look at a couple problems from tonight's homework, and we'll see if we can get you going. Problem number one, I'm going to do the first one, the very first one, 1A. Um, the directions are pretty straightforward. Draw place value disks on the place value chart to solve. Show each step using the standard algorithm. So we're going to first put this number, our first number, 5 and 241 thousandths, um, into our place value chart. And I think I'm going to try to use, I'm going to try to use pretty big dots. Let's see if this is, let's see, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five ones. And let's see, we've got two tenths, so that's one, two, and then four hundredths, one, two, three, four, and one thousandth. Excellent. Now, let's take a look. We're going to divide that number these represented here by these dots, into three equal parts. And so what we do on our place value chart is we draw lines here to create three rows, right? We got three rows running across here, and it'll allow us to take these dots and divide them into those uh, three different rows. So let's see, for, first thing we gotta do is we gotta divide our biggest unit. So let's try to divide our ones. There are five of them, and we're trying to put them in three groups, and it looks to me like all we can do is take care of one, two, three of these. I'm gonna cross these out with a smaller pen. Let's see. We go cross, cross, cross. That's three of them that we've taken care of. But I'll be darned, we can't divide two ones equally, the two remaining ones, across our three groups. So we're going to have to decompose those. So I'm going to draw a little line here of decomposing those two. We're going to decompose each of those into uh, tenths. So let's see, we can make each of those ones into one, two, oh no, see now I've gotten small on you. I, don't, I promised I wasn't going to do that. Let's see. Into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's one of them, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's another ten of them. Awesome. So now we've taken care of all of our ones because we have decomposed those two and we've divided up the other three into these three equal parts. Now we can move on. Let's move on to our next largest unit, and that's tenths. And now it looks like we have ten, twenty, twenty-two tenths that we're going to divide across our three groups. So let's see, 22, well, let's see, 21 divided by 3 is 7, so I think I can put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, well, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's 21 of those dots. I hesitate to do this, but I'm going to do it. Let's see, it's crossing out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So, again, we have just one little dot remaining that we weren't able to divide equally. So, again, we're going to decompose that into 10 of the next smaller units. So that would be 10 hundredths. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... And finally, we are done with all of our tenths. And we can move to our hundredths. Let's go ahead and look at our hundredths. We've got 10 here that we decompose, plus 4 more, so that's 14 hundredths. 14 hundredths across three different groups. Let's see. Well, if we had 15, we could divide them evenly, but it looks like we're going to have to only divide 12 of them. So let's see. 12 would be... Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4 in each group. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... That will account for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then we're going to have to decompose again our two hundredths into 20 thousandths. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So now we've decomposed those two hundredths. They're gone. And now we can move on to our next smaller unit, which is thousands. And we've got 21 of those, and finally, we've got some good news, because we know that 21 can divide evenly across these three groups. We can put 7 in each group. That's 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And at the end of the day, we will say that in each of these groups, oh, so I'm using a big pen again, 
Each of these groups has 1 1 7 tenths, 4 hundredths, and 7 thousandths. So, that, so that's what we think our answer is. 1 and 747 thousandths. Okay, now let's take a look at our standard method. So, I just want to point out the mechanics of this. The number that we started with in the beginning is our dividend, so that goes underneath our division bracket, right? 5.241. The divisor, the thing we're dividing by, is the 3, right? And it goes right out front. And up here, we're going to figure out the quotient. Now, when we do standard division, we are doing the exact same thing we did in the place value chart, only we don't have to draw a million dots. So, follow along. We look at our biggest units first, and we say there are five ones. Could we divide those into three equal groups? Sure. We could take three of them, right? One, two, three. One in each group. That means each group will have one, exactly one. And how many have we used up when we've divided across those three groups? We've put one in each group. We have used one times three, one, one times three, or three. We've used up three, so we subtract it because we've used it up. That leaves us with two ones remaining. And what we do, now the language that your parents and I would have l learned is we pull down the, the two, but that's not really what we're doing. Let's think about it for a second. What we're saying is we can no longer divide these big units, ones. I'm sorry, yeah, these ones, right? So we're going to need to make tenths. We have 20 tenths left here. That's what two is. And we have two more tenths here. And so we're going to say the next number we should divide is 22 tenths, right? Not 2.2, not two ones and two tenths, but 22 tenths. And when we divide up 22 tenths, if we were standing there with, with 22 tenths in our hand, and we divide them into three equal groups, we would be able to give each group 7. Right? We could think of that as skip counting. We could skip count them either by 3s or by 7s, but we could think about it also this way, right? We were able to take our 22 tenths and evenly divide them across three groups by putting 7 exactly seven in each group. And when we did that, when we made three groups of seven, we used up 21 of our tenths. We used up 21, so we subtract. We had 22 tenths. We used up 21 tenths. That leaves us with only one tenth. So now, we need to move to even a smaller unit. We no longer want to think of our tenths as one tenth, because that's not helpful. It's not divisible. But we can think about it as ten hundredths. And we have four other hundredths from up here. Right? Four other hundredths gives us fourteen hundredths, just as we had over here, fourteen hundredths. And we are able to divide those into three groups. Let's see, we could put four of those dots in each group, four of those hundredths. And that means that we will have used up four, eight, twelve, or four times three hundredths, twelve hundredths that we've used up out of our fourteen, leaving us with only two hundredths left. Not a divisible number, right? We can't divide two hundredths into three groups. So we start thinking of them as thousands. And we already had another thousandth down here, right? Our one thousandths. And now we can think of this number, instead of two hundredths and one thousandths, we can think of it as twenty-one thousandths. Just as we did here, twenty-one thousandths divided by into three groups gives us seven in each group. That's what we're going to put here. Seven into... 7 times 3 is 21, and that uses up all of our thousandths. Awesome. So that's the full version of division all the way through to the end, and it shows us that our place value division, which is fairly complicated but very mechanical and very easy to do step by step, is in fact the exact same thing that we're doing when we do our standard algorithm of division. Let's take a look at one more problem tonight. So let's look at problem number 2. Problem number two asks us, pretty simply, to solve using the standard algorithm. I'm going to do 2b, which is in here in the middle, and I'm going to go ahead and expand this out so that my large fingers will actually work on this. So remember, we're going to set this up the same way, right? This is our dividend right here, and we're going to set that up in the middle. We got 6.45. We'll put our division brace there, and we put our divisor, which in this case is 5, over here, and then we're going to figure out our quotient, which is going to go up here. So again, we start with our biggest units, and let's see what we've got. Our biggest look, units look to be our ones here. We've got six ones, and we're going to divide them into five groups. And if we were to, to, to separate our six ones and equally into five groups, we would be able to put one in every one of those groups. 
and we would use up five of our ones in doing that, right? We'd have one one in each of five groups, so we'd use up five of our ones. So we go ahead and do the subtraction. We started with six ones. We used up five ones, so that means we have one one left. And when we pull down our four, what we're saying here is that we now have 14 tenths to divide, right? We used to have six ones. We used up five of them. That left us with one one. That's not something that we can divide, so we're, we're going to uh, decompose that into tenths and make that into 14 tenths when you combine it with the four tenths we already had. So if we had 14 tenths and we divided it equally across five groups, we would be able to put two in every group. We would use up two times five, two tenths times five, or ten of our tenths. That would leave us with four of our tenths. We are going to bring down our hundredths to make 45 hundredths, rather than four tenths and five hundredths, we'll call that 45 hundredths. And 45 hundredths can be divided into five groups by putting nine hundredths in each group. Oops, sorry. Nine hundredths in each of our groups. Nine hundredths in each of our groups is nine times five. Nine hundredths times five are 45 hundredths. 45 means we have nothing left. So that's 1.29. Our quotient is 1.29. We don't have a remainder. And we can say that 6.45, 6 and 45 hundredths divided by 5 is 1.29, or 1 and 29 hundredths. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink that back out to show you the rest of those problems. I have every confidence that we've done, having done a problem like this, you'll be able to do this kind of a problem, and you'll be able to do this kind of problem. Remember to set up the problem correctly with our uh, dividend and our divisor. You're looking for a quotient. And remember to work from the biggest units, in this case ones, all the way toward our smaller units. So ones, then tenths, then hundredths. In this case, your biggest unit is, looks like it's going to be tenths. And over here, your biggest unit looks like it's going to be tens. So a little bit of a different problem every time. You're just going to keep dividing up your big units, decomposing those into smaller the remainder parts into smaller units, and keep dividing and dividing and dividing. You, if you want to pull out a place value chart to help you with problems like this, feel free to do that. Maybe you can use your whiteboard, or you maybe you can use the scratch paste elsewhere on the page. Um, but recognize that what's going on in that place value division is exactly the same thing that we're doing here with our standard operating division, our standard algorithm. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.